Namibia is stepping up in a way that's leaving the world in awe, taking a bold stance against Germany's recent actions. This move has sent ripples across continents, challenging the norms of international relations. Western powerhouses, often seen as unshakable pillars on the world stage, are now facing a formidable challenge from an African nation known for its resilience and determination to stand up for justice. Undeterred by its past encounters with Western dominance, Namibia is now leading a charge that many did not see coming. Their response to Germany's intervention, in a case they had no direct part in, especially without solid evidence, speaks volumes. This confrontation raises questions about the balance of power and whether we're on the brink of a new kind of Cold War. Is Africa signaling a new era of assertiveness? We're about to explore the depths of Namibia's bold move and what it means for the future of international relations. Stay tuned to uncover the story that everyone should be talking about. In bold defiance, Namibia has taken a stand against Germany's recent efforts to back Israel amidst a contentious legal battle at the International Court of Justice. This move by Germany a nation with historical ties to Namibia, has stirred a wave of dissatisfaction within the African country. Namibia's objection isn't just about politics, it's deeply personal, rooted in a history of colonial pain and injustice. Germany's stance, viewed as unwavering support for Israel, has reignited memories of a past that Namibia cannot forget. The assertion from Germany labeling South Africa's claims as absurd has only fueled the fire. Germany's commitment to defend Israel's right to self-defense echoes loudly in the ears of the Namibian people, reminding them of a time when their rights were trampled upon. Namibia, with its breathtaking landscapes where the desert kisses the sea, holds a story of resilience and survival. Once a territory under German colonial rule, Namibia experienced firsthand the brutality of an oppressor who seized land and livelihoods. The serene beauty of Namibia, marked by the stark contrast of the Namib desert alongside the Atlantic Ocean, belies a turbulent history. The German occupation brought about a period of intense suffering and loss for the indigenous people, a time when peace was shattered and communities were torn apart. The Namibians, living harmoniously within their diverse ecosystems, were suddenly thrust into a nightmare of exploitation and violence. The German colonizers, initially arriving under the guise of friendship and cooperation, quickly revealed their true intentions. They embarked on a ruthless campaign of land appropriation and forced labor, stripping the Namibian people of their dignity and freedom. The cattle, a symbol of wealth and prosperity for many Namibian communities, were confiscated and the people were enslaved, their autonomy crushed under the weight of colonial greed. This dark chapter in Namibia's history is a testament to the resilience of its people. Despite facing overwhelming odds, they resisted, holding on to their cultural identity and fighting for their right to exist on their terms. The scars left by German colonial rule run deep, a constant reminder of the atrocities committed on Namibian soil. It's against this backdrop that Namibia's current leadership has voiced its condemnation of Germany's interference in the Israel-Palestine conflict. The irony is not lost on Namibia's president, who sees Germany's position as hypocritical given its historical transgressions. The reminder serves as a powerful call to acknowledge and rectify past injustices, challenging the narrative of moral superiority often portrayed by former colonial powers. In the heart of Namibia, among its vast landscapes and vibrant cultures, the Herero, Nama, Damara, and San tribes have long thrived, each with its own rich heritage and stories. However, a shadow was cast over this land in 1904 when the spirit of resistance against foreign dominion 
ignited a fierce uprising. At the forefront of this revolt was Chief Samuel Maharero, a leader among the Herero people, who decided that the time had come to challenge the oppressive German colonizers who had encroached upon their lands and freedoms. Chief Maharero's call to arms was a beacon for those who yearned for liberation from the yoke of German colonial rule. His rallying cry united not just the Herero, but also garnered support from neighboring tribes, all bracing for a monumental stand against an adversary whose technological and military prowess was unmatched on the African continent. Initially, the indigenous forces managed to deliver significant blows to the German settlers, demonstrating their resolve and the effectiveness of their tactics. This early success was a testament to the courage and strategy of the Namibian resistance. They managed to eliminate key German figures, striking a temporary blow to the colonizers' morale and command structure. However, the initial triumphs were short-lived. Germany, recognizing the threat to their colonial ambitions, responded with overwhelming force. The might of the German Empire was unleashed upon the Namibians, leading to devastating consequences for Maharero's fighters and the civilian population alike. The turning point came with the arrival of Lieutenant Lothar von Trotha, a man whose name would be etched in history for his brutal tactics and disregard for human life. Von Trotha's approach marked a dark chapter in the conflict as he sought to quell the uprising not through engagement or negotiation, but through extermination. His infamous order to annihilate the Herero and Nama people, regardless of age or gender, led to untold suffering and loss. This period of intense conflict and atrocity reached a peak in November 1904, marking one of the most tragic episodes in Namibia's history. The German forces under von Trotha's command did not just fight the warriors, but also targeted innocents, leading to a humanitarian disaster. The aftermath saw the survivors herded into concentration camps where the objective shifted from outright slaughter to a slow demise through disease, starvation and forced labor. Today, Namibia's confrontation with Germany over its defense of Israel in the international arena reignites deep-seated wounds. The president of Namibia, echoing the sentiments of his nation, points out the irony of Germany's actions. There's a palpable frustration that, despite the decades past, Germany has not fully acknowledged the gravity of the atrocities committed during the colonial era, particularly the genocide against the Herero and Nama people. Germany's belated gestures of returning cultural artifacts and human remains, once displayed in European museums as trophies of colonial conquest, barely scratch the surface of true reparation. These items, symbols of Namibia's rich heritage and painful past, were transported across continents to serve as exhibits of racial superiority. The return of these artifacts, though a step towards recognizing the past, is seen as too little, too late. The Namibian people seek a form of acknowledgement that carries both moral weight and tangible benefits, akin to the compensation provided to Jewish victims of the Holocaust. This comparison underscores the disparity in how different acts of injustice are addressed on the global stage. The narrative of restitution is further complicated by allegations against corporations like Mercedes-Benz, accused of benefiting from the colonial exploitation of Namibia. These accusations highlight the complex web of responsibility that extends beyond national governments to include private entities. The call for justice is not just about returning stolen artifacts, it's about acknowledging the full extent of the harm caused and making amends in a manner that honors the dignity of those affected. In a recent encounter that speaks volumes about the evolving dynamics of international relations and the echoes of colonial legacies, President Haga Geingob of Namibia found himself addressing concerns raised by a German politician about the demographic changes in Namibia. The German visitor, upon setting foot in Namibia, expressed his unease over the increasing presence of Chinese nationals, which, in his view, 
far outnumbered the German community. This observation, rather than reflecting a genuine concern for Namibia's well-being, unveiled the remnants of a colonial mindset that still measures influence and presence through the lens of past dominions. President Geingob's response to the German politician's complaints was nothing short of a masterclass in diplomacy and assertiveness. He sharply questioned the underlying implications of the politician's remarks, challenging the audacity of lamenting the demographic shifts in a sovereign nation. The president's retort was a clear message. Namibia is no longer a playground for former colonial powers to dictate terms or express grievances over its international partnerships. This exchange highlighted not just the shifting geopolitical landscapes, but also the deep-seated colonial attitudes that occasionally surface in diplomatic circles. President Geingob's reference to the treatment of Namibian diplomats in Germany was particularly telling. It shed light on the stark contrast between the red carpet welcome extended to Germans in Namibia and the scrutiny faced by Namibians in Germany, even those holding diplomatic passports. This disparity, according to President Geingob, underscored the unequal treatment and the lingering prejudices that Namibians encounter abroad. At the heart of these diplomatic exchanges, President Hag Geingob of Namibia made his stance crystal clear, reinforcing the sovereignty of Namibia's diplomatic decisions and international relationships. The treatment meted out to Namibian government representatives in Germany starkly contrasted with the privileges and immunities normally afforded to diplomatic passport holders. Such incidents underline the enduring inequalities and biases that persist in international relations, particularly against nations from the African continent. President Geingob's forthright conversation with the German politician not only spotlighted the issue of diplomatic respect, but also underscored a broader principle, the autonomy of Namibia to choose its allies and define its foreign policy without external interference. This declaration of independence was a firm reminder that Namibia, and indeed any sovereign nation, reserves the right to forge partnerships based on mutual respect and shared interests, free from the shadows of historical colonialism. In this context, President Geingob's support for South Africa's legal actions against Israel at the International Court of Justice was emblematic of a broader solidarity with the plight of Palestinians in Gaza. This position reflects a nuanced understanding of the complex geopolitical dynamics at play, recognizing the need for proportionate responses in conflicts and the importance of distinguishing between combatants and civilians. By aligning with South Africa, Namibia not only exercised its sovereign right to international diplomacy, but also voiced its concern over the disproportionate impact of conflicts on civilian populations. In the intricate web of international politics, the solidarity, or lack thereof, among African nations in the face of global conflicts becomes a focal point for discussion. South Africa's bold move to challenge Israel's actions in Gaza at the International Court of Justice has sparked a conversation about unity, freedom of expression, and the fear of repercussions on a continental scale. Namibia's lone voice in support of South Africa's stance raises questions about the collective spirit of Africa in addressing issues of global justice and human rights. This situation sheds light on a broader dilemma, the hesitation among African countries to openly support South Africa's legal battle against Israel. This reluctance can be attributed to several factors, including the potential political and economic fallout from opposing Israel a country closely allied with the United States. The alliance between the US and Israel is well documented, often translating into a formidable partnership that many nations are wary of challenging due to possible diplomatic and financial repercussions. The question of African solidarity in this context is not just about a single legal case, it's about the principle of being able to articulate one's stance without fear of retribution. 
freedom of expression is deemed a fundamental right. Yet the apprehension surrounding the potential consequences of siding with South Africa against Israel suggests a constrained form of liberty. This scenario prompts a reflection on what it truly means to be free, whether freedom entails the ability to express one's views and convictions openly, regardless of the geopolitical stakes involved. The lack of widespread support from other African nations for South Africa's cause is a telling sign of the complexities and challenges faced by the continent in presenting a united front on international issues. It raises critical questions about the dynamics of African unity, the pressures exerted by global powers, and the capacity of African nations to support each other in times of controversy. Moreover, the situation underscores the enduring influence of global superpowers on the political decisions and alliances of African countries. The assertion by leaders like Joe Biden that the US will always stand with Israel regardless of the circumstances exemplifies the unwavering support that influences the geopolitical landscape. This reality places African nations in a delicate position, navigating the tightrope between expressing solidarity with their neighbors and mitigating the risks associated with opposing a nation backed by the world's leading superpower. Amidst the backdrop of international disputes and calls for solidarity, a poignant question arises, challenging the very essence of brotherhood among African nations. The candid frustration expressed over the term brother captures a sentiment of disillusionment with the notion of African unity. This feeling stems from actions, or the lack thereof, that fail to embody the support and loyalty expected among those who share a common heritage and face similar challenges on the global stage. The call for unity and mutual support within Africa is not just a plea for camaraderie. It's a reflection on historical patterns where division and individualism have often overshadowed collective resistance and empowerment. The analogy drawn to the era of slavery, where individuals were bartered for trivial goods, serves as a stark reminder of the consequences of disunity. This historical reference not only evokes the pain of past betrayals, but also underscores the necessity for a united front against external pressures and conflicts. The challenge laid out to African nations to stand together on issues, regardless of the nature of the conflict, touches on a deeper yearning for a sense of community and solidarity that transcends borders and political interests. It's a call to remember the shared struggles and aspirations that bind the continent, urging nations to rise above fear and self-preservation to support each other in times of need. This sentiment extends beyond Africa, questioning the global response of Muslim and Arab countries to conflicts affecting their brethren. The rhetorical question of whether these nations are truly leaning towards their people, regardless of who's right or wrong, reflects a broader concern about the integrity of international alliances and the principles that guide them. The reflection on Russia's perceived reaction to the lack of African unity not only adds a layer of geopolitical speculation, but also highlights the external observation of Africa's internal divisions. The notion of opening borders and fostering greater cooperation within Africa is juxtaposed with the current reality of fragmented support, raising doubts about the feasibility of such aspirations without a foundational sense of solidarity. Germany's decision to involve itself in the dispute between South Africa and Israel over allegations of genocide is a twist that has drawn global attention. South Africa, with its history deeply rooted in the struggle against apartheid and its ongoing commitment to human rights, has not shied away from calling out what it sees as injustices, even when it means pointing fingers at nations like Israel for actions deemed excessively harsh against the Palestinian people. Germany's entry into this complex dialogue is not as a direct participant, but rather as a third-party influencer. 
with a past marked by its own dark chapters of conflict and the journey toward reconciliation, Germany saw an opening to assert its influence on the global stage, yet its role in this scenario raises as many questions as it answers. Why, then, did South Africa cast such serious aspersions towards Israel? The answer lies in South Africa's staunch advocacy for human rights and its identification with the Palestinian cause, seeing parallels with its own historical fight against oppression. This decision to accuse Israel of genocide is a bold move, reflecting South Africa's commitment to standing up for what it perceives as fundamental human rights violations. Germany's decision to wade into these troubled waters by backing Israel at the International Court of Justice ICJ, has stirred the pot, adding complexity to an already volatile situation. This move by Germany is seen as trying to strike a diplomatic balance, yet it inadvertently fans the flames of contention. The undercurrents of this decision are influenced by the broader Western alliance, where geopolitical loyalties and strategic interests play a crucial role. Germany, aligning with the Western bloc's general stance, aims to support Israel, thereby preserving the status quo in international relations. However, this alignment also hints at underlying fears within the Western bloc of a possible shift in global sentiment towards Palestine. South Africa's vocal support for Palestine might inspire other nations to express similar solidarity, potentially altering the geopolitical landscape. Germany's intervention, therefore, can be viewed as a preemptive measure to counterbalance any tilt towards a pro-Palestine stance that could disrupt the fragile equilibrium in international affairs. Namibia's vocal criticism of Germany's stance in the international arena isn't merely a matter of political disagreement, it's a profound expression of disillusionment rooted in a deep commitment to human rights. This African nation, with a history scarred by the brutality of colonial rule, shares a sense of kinship with those suffering under oppression. Namibia's empathy for the Palestinian cause is not born out of political convenience, but from a genuine understanding of what it means to fight for dignity and freedom. For Namibia, the battle is personal. The scars of its own history with German colonialism serve as a constant reminder of the long struggle against domination and the quest for sovereign equality. This shared experience with historical injustice positions Namibia as a steadfast advocate for the rights of the oppressed, making its stance on the Israel-Palestine conflict a matter of principle rather than mere diplomacy. The frustration with Germany's recent actions, choosing to support Israel at the International Court of Justice, stems from what Namibia perceives as a departure from a shared commitment to uphold the sanctity of human rights. In Namibia's eyes, Germany's choice is seen not as a neutral act of foreign policy, but as a tacit endorsement of practices that contradict the fundamental values of justice and morality. This perception is exacerbated by the belief that Germany's motivation is more about aligning with Western accolades than adhering to the ethical imperatives that should guide international conduct. Namibia's critique goes beyond the specifics of the current conflict to touch on broader questions about the role of morality in global relations. By standing firm in its support for Palestine, Namibia is not just challenging Germany's diplomatic decisions, it's calling into question the very principles that underpin international engagement. This stance is a clarion call for a return to a value-driven approach to diplomacy where ethical considerations take precedence over geopolitical strategies. In a striking act of defiance, Namibia has taken a bold step to confront its colonial past head-on. Authorities in the nation made a powerful statement by removing and relocating a statue of Kurt von Francois, a figure whose legacy is marred by controversy. 
Known as a German military leader credited by some with founding Windhoek, Namibia's capital, Bon Francois's monument had long stood as a symbol of a painful era. This move, spurred by the persistent voices of local activists and backed by a re-examination of history by scholars, marks a significant moment in Namibia's ongoing journey to reclaim its narrative. The decision to dismantle the statue is more than a mere physical act. It's a profound gesture of reclaiming autonomy and rewriting a history that has been for too long narrated by the lens of the colonizers. By challenging the glorification of a colonial figure, Namibia sends a clear message of resistance against the remnants of oppression and a step towards healing the wounds left by decades of foreign domination. This act of removing von Francois's statue from a place of honor in Windhoek is a testament to Namibia's commitment to justice and truth, reflecting a broader desire to correct historical inaccuracies and honor the true architects of its nationhood. Does standing up for human rights always mean going against powerful global alliances? We'd love to hear your thoughts on this complex issue. Drop your opinions in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more insightful discussions on Africa's geopolitics and its impact on the world stage. See you in the next video. Until then, keep questioning and stay informed.